I like the rhythm of that song, but I got news for you. I could just read the words and get blessed. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say he's going to be short-winded. Now tell him unless he gets inspired. There There aren't many pages, but there's a lot of feeling in my soul. You may be seated. It's true, it is, that with the mere tick of a clock, you and I, along with untold millions, will irrevocably close the cover on the book of our lives that was 2017, as this day draws to an end. We'll bundle up the events, the experiences that have been visited upon us individually or on our families collectively, whether they have been for good or evil, both blessings and buffetings, our triumphs, our trials, our victories, our defeats. Tonight we will draw down the curtain on it all. And thankfully we will begin again. Ideally, hopefully, not so intoxicated by our good fortune so as to cease striving to apprehend that for which we were apprehended, but neither hopefully so devastated by the wounds that we may have suffered, the bruises that we've borne, as citizens of a fallen world so as to surrender or forfeit our promises or abandon our hope. In, indeed, tonight, a year will in fact end, but I think it's more important to note that tomorrow a new one begins. A fresh page, uncluttered by yesterday's narrative, a clean slate, unmarred by last year's mistakes. With the mere tick of a clock, with the turn of a calendar, the bold fist of opportunity will come knocking at your door and mine. And it's my considered hope that not a few of us, spiritually at least, will answer that call. With intense prayer, fervently seeking God's mind and God's will for us, our POA family now, carefully considering Over these past several weeks and even months, God's mandate. Our mission as His body in the earth universally, part of His body in this community locally. There are two imperatives that have been burned unmistakably into my consciousness and my soul first and foundational to all else is our renewed commitment to the biblical the apostolic truths to which we have been called by which we have been saved and upon which we have been commanded to stand And I I do this day declare to you that those truths will 
be preached and taught more frequently and more forcefully, more consistently and more compellingly, if possible, than they ever have been preached and taught before. The second of those two imperatives is my promise to articulate again to this august body of believers, to articulate to us again more clearly and more conventionally than ever the singular command of Jesus Christ to his church. And that is to go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And I pledge to you that both of those things we will do. And we will do with fresh faith. And we will do with a renewed fervor and focus. And we will begin them today. You shall know the truth, John 8.32 tells us. And the truth shall make you free. By the truth says the wise man in Proverbs 23, and sell it not. The psalmist happily confessed, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. He continued, in that 119th Psalm to say, I have chosen the way of truth. Indeed, he said, I have stuck unto thy testimonies. Great God Almighty, let me get stuck on your word. He said, I have chosen thy truth. I have stuck under thy testimonies and I will run the way of thy commandments. He has chosen it. He stuck to it and he'll run after it. And the church said, Amen. Amen. And rather than waiting to obey or walking with halting steps, toward truth. The psalmist admits, I made haste, say it. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Little wonder when John 13, 17 tells us, if ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. If you're not very happy, then maybe you're not doing everything you know to do. For if ye know these things, happy, are ye if ye do them. Indeed, the unbelievable blessings that are promised in Deuteronomy 28, and they are numerous, they were offered to those whom the Bible said, observe and do all his commandments. And then conversely, James 4 tells us, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him 
It is sin. It's not just unfortunate. It's sin. Because my company is so critical to my character. I wish I got to preach to me because I help people preach so much. I would enjoy preaching more if I got to preach to me. Hey, I don't care if you don't say nothing. I'm going to say it all. Because my company, because my company is so critical to my character, I will hear, I will heed Paul's warning to those Corinthian Christians when he said, Be not deceived, for evil communication or company corrupts good manners. If you read that in the Living Bible, paraphrase. It says, if you listen to them, you will start acting like them. As we end this year, we need a renewed commitment to the truth by which we are saved, upon which we stand and to which we have been called to be faithful. David said, I am a companion of all them that fear thee. Oh, I could go off on that right now. Because really, when people walk away from truth and fail to do what they know to do, it's a fear issue. They don't fear God. David said, I'm a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. Doesn't mean I can't be a friend with somebody that doesn't do everything they ought to do. It means that it's not easy for me to enter into a spirit of fellowship. That's not where I get my fellowship. Job said, my foot hath held his steps, and his way have I kept and not declined, and neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips, and I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And, and, and why should I not? When the Bible said in Psalm 19, the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, and sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, say it, say by them. By them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them... There is great reward. If you and I will learn that truth and keep it, there is great reward. Paul cautioned the Colossian Christians to beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Be careful when people start giving you their opinion on what God meant. The Bible said a wayfaring man though a fool shall not err therein. It's clear. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after 
the tradition of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. And he told the Hebrews, be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines for it is a good thing that the heart be established. I like the feeling I get when I shake somebody's hand that's still living by the same Bible they were living by 25 years ago and 35 years ago and 45 years ago. I looked somebody in the eye the other day and I said, I got news for you. I'm not doing anything different than I did when I was 12 years old. And I'm not. Titus 1, holding fast the faithful word as you have been taught, that you may be able to, by sound doctrine, you're going to get doctrine running out of your ears, that you may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsay. 2 Thessalonians, therefore, brethren, say it. Say, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle, truths and traditions that come to us from pure and holy hearts and hands. He said, hold those traditions which ye have been taught. The psalmist said, we have heard with our ears Oh God, our fathers have told us. I like that. Hey, Dad. When your kid thinks they've discovered something new, and tells you they have to find their own way, you tell them the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. Jeremiah 10, 23, if you can't find it. The Bible doesn't tell me to find my own way. The Bible tells me to follow his way. Jesus said, I can tell if you're my disciple. I can tell if you love me. He said, you keep my commandments. No rocket science. He said, our father, Psalm 44, 1, our fathers have told us. Thank God for fathers. Hey, you can't determine what your kids do. You can't make anybody do anything. But thank God for fathers. And I'll stop and say mothers too, who at least have the courage of their conviction. Our fathers have told us what work you did. This is speaking of God in their day. They've told us about who you are and what you do. You remember Deuteronomy 6. These words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. But he said, you don't just want these words to be in your heart. Thou shalt talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You want to always be transferring truth and communicating the gospel of the ways of Jesus Christ. The apostolic writer proclaimed that his greatest joy, if I heard my daddy say this once, I heard it a thousand times, that his greatest joy was to hear that his children walk in truth.
I don't think there's anything at all wrong with involvement and fun and competition. But you hear me. Your greatest joy shouldn't be that your son scored the most goals in a soccer match or that he hit a home run and caught the last out in the ninth inning. And your greatest joy shouldn't be that he killed an eight-point buck or whatever. Your greatest joy should be that your children walk in truth. Because everything you see in this world is going to melt with a fervent heat and pass away. But God said, my word shall abide forever. That should be our greatest joy. Clap your hands and shout to God. God help us not to abandon the truths, the traditions that have been given us from pure, prayerful, holy men and women of God. Help us not to exchange those things for the whim, for the opinions, for the ideas, for the fleshly philosophies of what sometimes are carnal, fickle, oftentimes prayerless people. It's easy to give away on your feet what you get on your knees. I don't know how you can read your Bible or look at the world you live in today and not believe that we are butted up against the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I say that to say this, I can't understand anybody looking for a less costly path. Butt it up against the return of our Lord, if anything, help me to take my commitment up a notch. Let me take my consecration up a notch. I don't want to get further from God. I want to get closer to God. I don't want to be less intimate with God. I want to get more intimate with God. I don't want to scale back my service and my commitment and my prayer and my integrity spiritually. I want to lift it all up to a higher level. Examine the people in your life. Examine the people in your life. Ask yourself a simple question. The voices that you listen to. The examples that you follow, are they leading me nearer God? Or are they wooing me farther from God? Paul wrote the Romans. He said, God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Isaiah prophesied in chapter 30, verse 21. He said, Thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying. <laughs> Is this the way? Walk ye in it. I don't think knowing what is right is as much the issue with some as having a heart that is willing to do what is right. And if there's one person in this room today that could be provoked, get frustrated at me, I don't care. But if something could provoke you to reassess your life and to reassess your commitment and to ask yourself, am I really the child of God? Am I the man of God? Am I the woman of God? Am I the child of God that I can be? Is my commitment commensurate with his blessings and his gift and his salvific sacrifice? 
thine ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. You need to be careful that your conversation does not give encouragement to people who are walking from the Lord versus to the Lord. You need to be careful that your kindness doesn't get misconstrued to be approbation for those individuals who know truth but don't do truth. We're not talking about people who don't know. We're talking about those of us who know, who have heard that voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Nothing more powerful, nothing more precious than truth. Hear, Pastor, when I tell you, to lose what we hold in our hands, that's one thing. But to lose what we have in our hearts, that's something else altogether that we need to be concerned with. It's easy to lose our own selves. It's easy to lose our offspring to the time. All of us who are parents have faced challenges. My dad used to tell me, I won't really know how well I did until somebody puts you in the ground. There's truth there. There he is. It's so easy. The cacophony of voices. And it's not in the notes if it'll make you feel better, but with the ubiquity of media, with antisocial media, social media where any fool can have their opinion spread across the world surely you see the danger in that surely you see why it becomes increasingly important that we sink ourselves in God's forever settled word and not let ourselves be led astray and deceive. It's easy to lose ourselves, to lose our offspring to our times. Our, our culture has the ability to capture us and our kids. And if we're not very careful, we can lose not just what's in our hands, but what's in our heart. We can lose truth. Everybody say, not a truth. Say, the truth. The truth that makes us free, John. I would tell you, the gates of hell have unquestionably prevailed. They have prevailed against our culture. They have prevailed in the world of music. They have prevailed in the world of movies. They have prevailed in the disposition of morals in our society the new morality is just the old immorality the gates of hell have prevailed in the world of entertainment in the world of education 
The gates of hell have prevailed in the world of fashion and dress and how people deport themselves. The gates of hell have prevailed in the world of integrity, just doing the right thing. Those gates have prevailed against marriages, against families, even against religions. There's just one thing against which God said the gates of hell could not, would not, will not prevail, and that is His church. And as long as there are men and women who will stand in pulpits and just speak truth just like it's written from that word. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Which is why the church is the same settled place for your family. The church is not perfect. The church is not without fault. The church is not without error. The church is made up of flawed humanity, but it's got God at its core, and it's got truth as its foundation, and it's the safe, settled place for your family. Stand your feet. <laughs> We've made some mistakes and we'll make some more. But as long as you can get somebody to stand in a pulpit and just read what that book said. We've got a safety net. We've got a safety net. There's not one jot or tittle going to pass from that law till the heavens are gone. That word's going to endure forever. God, as we end this year, Help us more ardently, more aggressively than ever to work, to do everything we know to do to get our family in this safe, settled place. greatest joy, I have no greater joy, says the Lord, than to know my children walk in truth. He didn't say they were perfect. He didn't say they did everything right. None of ours or yours or anybody else is doing that. But as long as we can keep them walking in truth, a Savior that's going to bankrupt heaven and storm the gates of hell to save their souls. I can tell you honestly and earnestly from my heart there's nothing I want to do more than to make this church a safe place for you There's only one doctrine going to be taught from this pulpit. That's the apostolic biblical doctrine that we can lay our finger on, book, chapter, and verse, and say, Yes, say it.
next year if you tarry and delay your coming I'm going to have somebody sitting here on this pew beside me that did not know you today I'm going to reach them with the gospel and I'm going to disciple them I'm going to teach them by my own example my words and my ways how to serve Jesus Christ I won't be sitting here alone next year I'm going to have somebody sitting here beside me I'm going to do what Jesus said Make disciples. God, as the overseer, the pastor of this assembly, I ask for your favor on these people. I ask you to bless them. Let there be joy around their table. I pray, God, that the healing virtue of Calvary will run like a river through our families and our homes, that you'll keep us healthy and whole. We know the same rain falls on the just and the unjust, but we also know that you've not only invited but commanded us to come to you and that you would help us you would heal us. I pray for every man and woman, every head of house in this room. Bless them financially. Bless them physically and intellectually to be able to provide for their families and to do it well. I pray you give us favor and blessing. I pray you keep us in your hand that you guide us with your eye put a covering over this people and let them know every day they walk out of their doors that somebody is praying a covering over their lives every day in Jesus name let this church explode with passion with love for truth with evangelism with disciple making let us love one another because you said loving each other is proof that we love you for how can we love God whom we have not seen if we can't love our brother whom we have keep us care for us I pray it in the name of Jesus Christ the youngest to the eldest the boldest to the meekest to the weakest to the strongest Gather us up in your arms like a hand does her foot. Hold us close. In Jesus' name I pray. God, if there are parents standing in this room today who have sons and daughters who have lost their way, I am praying that you drop a dragnet, that you go out with mercy. embrace of grace and let them come home to this safe place in the name of Jesus Christ in the name above everything Jesus Christ we ask these blessings and favors and everybody say Jesus 
Everybody say in Jesus' name. I want you to look in the face of God and tell him, God, I'm going to love your truth. And I'm going to go make disciples. I'm going to love your truth. And I'm going to go make disciples. Tell him, God, I'm going to love your truth. And I'm going to go make disciples in Jesus' name.